Thank you. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Dadar, great to see you. Thank you for coming before us to discuss a matter of the utmost importance. Uh, I commend you and your staff on the work that was put into this year's high-risk report. Uh, many of the wasteful government programs that you identified here today have been discussed and rightfully criticized. Discussions are good and can be effective. However, discussions require follow-through uh, to be effective. Unfortunately, Congress and the executive branch have been missing the bar when it comes to follow-through for decades. As you know, uh, my colleague, Rep Kilmer, and I worked on legislation contained in last year's NDA uh, that requires GAO to provide succinct priority recommendation reports to congressional committees. These reports would be organized by topic and contain the amount of time a priority recommendation has been open uh, for and a cost savings estimate, among other things. So my first question is, how many total priority recommendations produced by the GAO remain outstanding? Uh, what recommendations has been outstanding the longest and how long is that? There's, there's hundreds of open priority recommendations. I'd have to go back and look at the, uh, the, uh, the winner, if you will, who's been open the longest. Uh, there's a number to go back a, a number it, of years. It's, it's years, it's, it's years. 10 it's, years or less? Well, I, I don't know, and okay. I'm not, I'm not going to guess. Sure. We, don't, we don't guess at GAO. We'll, we'll, we'll give, you, the, we'll give, give you, you the facts. I'll give you another one. Uh, what recommendation that hasn't been addressed concerns you the most? Uh, there's a number in that could save a lot of money. The one I mentioned earlier in the Medicare area, where you were paying people differently based on place of service for the same service. That doesn't seem to be a good practice on the part of the federal government. Secondly, would be the one I just mentioned on IRS, uh, which is uh, to give IRS the requirement, to set requirements for paid tax preparers. I think that would generate additional revenue for the federal government without any additional costs, and it'd be a more fair and equitable tax system. The one on Hanford is, is important, too, because that has, in low-level uh, radioactive waste disposal, that has tens of billions of dollars in potential benefits. I know you don't like guessing, but what if we implemented all of the recommendations you've made? How much do you think that would save the federal government? Uh, between 30 million uh, billion and 100 billion. So we should implement these recommendations. I, I, I don't have to guess on that. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, yes. How much of this falls on congressional inaction compared to the executive branch agencies? Uh, it, it falls, you know, about equally. Uh, you know, the, there's a number of open recommendations for the for the Congress as well as. The, uh, the agencies. Most of the big dollar savings, though, would have to require congressional action. So in regards to the uh, initial report from the legislation that was signed into law last year in the NDAA, uh, how far along is it, and when do you think Congress should expect to receive it? Uh, you'll have it in June. In June? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I want to transition to uh, PPP fraud. Um, obviously, the, Tens of billions, possibly $100 billion, was stolen through the PPP uh, loan program. And uh, I actually introduced the PPP Shell Company Discovery Act, which uh, basically forces communication between SBA, IRS, and DOJ. And I think that's just one step in reclaiming fraudulent payments. Um, I guess my question is, is the SBA fit to mitigate fraud in future emergency situations? Did we learn anything? Uh, yes, yeah, so we learned quite a bit. SBA is trying to put in place a better fraud management framework that, that meets GAO best practices. We've had several conversations with the current administrator. Uh, they've finally designated an entity, but it's not fully staffed yet. They still have to do some more work. But yes, uh, I think we've learned some things. We're trying to put in place better practices over there. And uh, I'm encouraged, but we're not where we need to be yet fully. In retrospect, do you think that we should have given, the CARES Act should have given the SBA access to some, some documents from a limited nature from the IRS to prevent what was hundreds of billions of dollars of fraud? Would that have fixed it? Uh, that would have made a big start on it. For example, they were prohibited by Congress from using tax transcripts in the emergency uh, or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, where they used them for the normal program, and that, that put them at a, at a big disadvantage. Even though Congress corrected that later, it still took them months to be able to uh, uh, get that back as a control. Sure, thank you. Um, I yield, and 